Hello guys, you're welcome to Varmage Fit. Here we'll learn techniques, tips and tricks of making beautiful and gorgeous outfits. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, like and comment on the videos and also click on the notification bell so it will notify you whenever I post a new video. Today, we're going to be learning how to make this very beautiful dress up here and in doing that, we're going to be drafting on the pattern paper so it will help us with the accuracy of cutting out all these pieces and putting them together. For this dress, we're going to be needing a black crepe, an already made cup and some African prints. You can decide to make use of all five pieces or just one African print. Also, I'm going to be making use of these appliques for embellishment. Now we're taking our shoulder to bust point, our shoulder to under bust, and here we're taking our shoulder to a waistline, and our shoulder to our hip length, and then the shoulder to the full dress length. Take your shoulder divided by two and make a point there. You go down one inch for your shoulder slope and take your basic neckline measurement which is three inches and make a point there then rule a line from that neckline to your shoulder slope take your shoulder to your chest line and mine is 7.5 inches and then make a rule there And also make a rule down to your chest line from your shoulder slope. Measure your shoulder to your chest line and then mark out the midpoint. Go in by 0.75 inch and make a mark there. And then rule from your shoulder slope down to that mark that you have made. Take your bust measurement, mine is nine and a quarter, and then curve out from your shoulder slope area down to the bust measurement. This dress, we're not going to be having any that, only on the bust area. So I'm going to take in my that, which is four inches from my waistline, and I'm going to take same measurement up to the bust point and then I'll make a rule down connecting these three dots I'm going to come in from the center front by half an inch and also come down to the under bust and make same measurement there so I'll take my ruler and connect the two points together. These ruled out lines are just guides to help us position our cup properly. So I'll take my already made cup now and position it directly on top of my under bust. Make sure to position it from the half inch at the center front. Hold your cup very firm to your paper so it doesn't move and then use a pencil to sketch it out. Please be very careful while doing this so your cup does not shift out of its placement. Mark out the cup edges from side to side because from that point upwards we are going to be adding interface on our fabric. Now I'm going to take my marker and trace out the pencil line for it to be more visible. I'll take my bust measurement divided by four and put a mark there. 
and I'll also take my waist measurement divided by four and also put a mark there. Now I'll take my hip measurement divided by four also and use same hip measurement for my full length. The full length of this dress is 39 inches. So I'm using same hip measurement on the hemline just to form a straight gown. And then I'll connect these lines together after checking for accuracy. So you can go ahead and do yours just the same way. I will mark out this curve down to the full length of the dress. And to my chest line, I will make a straight roll down to the center front. I'll measure my shoulder to chest line, which is 8.5 inches. And label that line my chest line. I don't want any open cleavage, so at the center front, I'll extend the half inch upward. And at my bust point, I'll go up by 1.5 inches and also do the same thing at the center front. At the armhole area, I'll come downwards by six inches just to create that off the and extend my bust cup to the neckline. So now I'm going to cut out the bust cup. To get the flare that extends from your center front to your center back, mark out three inches on your hemline which is your dress length and from your hip line go down by four inches and mark out three inches there too then draw a curved rule from your waistline down to your hemline and then cut open we'll keep this curved pattern aside and then draft our back bodies so i already have my lines ruled out just as we did at the front block then I have my shoulder divided by two and then my shoulder to my chest line, shoulder to bust points, shoulder to under bust, shoulder to hip line and then shoulder to the full length of my dress. And then on the armhole curve, I went in by half an inch and rolled it down to my chest line. So I'll take my bust measurement now, divided by four, and make a point there. And also take my waist measurement, divided by four, make a point, and do the same. Take my hip measurement, divided by four, also at the full length of the dress. I'll take my bust measurement on my chest line and then connect all the dots together. Remember, this dress will not be having any dot aside the bust cup. Now I'm connecting all the points together. So here we are forming a basic dress at the back block. And then for our neckline, I'll go up by half an inch because I do not want the neckline to be too deep. And also as we did at the front, come down by six inches and then connect these two dots together, thereby forming our back neckline.
So to get the basque effect at your waist area, place your tape on your waistline from the center back and measure 5 inches. You can decide to go as low as 6 inches but for me i will make use of 5 inches. Then make a point there. Take your ruler and rule connecting your waistline to the 5 inch point. And also I'll rule it into the zipper allowance. So I'll go ahead and cut out this piece. I decide to add my seam allowance on my back block just to show you where you'll be having your seam allowance. So do the same on the front block. As we can see, the lower part of this dress will not be having any side seam allowance. So go ahead and cut this out. So I'm creating a depth at my zipper area and then I'll go ahead and cut out my neckline. After this, I'll adjust my armhole and cut this pattern into two pieces. Now you can see the form it has taken. So this is how it's going to be like when you cut yours. So I'll go back to the top of this pattern to take my back half length. You know the measurement for our front and our back half length are two different lengths. So I'll be taking mine to eliminate zipper bulge. I can decide to make use of 14 and a half inches but for this dress, I'll be making use of 15 inches because it will work better for me. So after ruling this out from the waistline, the side waistline to the center back and go in by 0.75 inch at that zipper area. Then make a roll from your center back neckline to that point and then down to where your basque stops. Now we have eliminated any zipper bulge that would have formed at the center back. So we're going to make use of these two pieces, the front cutout piece and the back cutout piece. I'll put these two patterns together by aligning them at the side seam area, creating one whole piece. To hold this together, I'll make use of my paper tape. and then indicate the side seam line with an arrow. We will assume this part of the pattern has been slashed open. So I'll create slash lines on the front and on the back piece. And I'm going to use two inches spacing to create these lines. If you don't want yours to be that wide, then you can reduce the spacing of the slash lines. Just as I did at the front, I'll do the same thing at the back. Starting from the zipper line. Now I'll rule out this um, points straight to the waist area with my ruler. So I'll use my pencil to create these lines just in case I want to change anything.
I will go ahead and slash these lines and spread open on another paper and then I'll cut out to shape. So this is how it looks like after cutting to shape. Now we have created a new waistline and if you look at this um, piece very well, it's like half of a cycle. So I have ruled out a straight line indicating my side seam and this line is going to be a guide for me in cutting out all the pieces um, in creating this flare. So I'll take my tape starting from that um, line at the waist area and measure 10 inches down to the front. So from that 10 inches, I'll measure 6 inches down. And take another 6 inches down. Leaving 2 inches at the lower part, which is fine. So at the side seam area, I'll take three inches downwards and then measure five inches and another five inches. Also going downwards another five inches. On this side seam, we're going to have five cutout pieces. So moving to the back, that's the zipper area. We're going to cut out five pieces just like we did on the side seam. So measuring from the waist downward will take four inches and we'll take same measurement all through, leaving two inches at the lower part. So please go ahead and do the same thing for yours. The next thing I'm going to do now is connecting these three dots together, starting from the front to the back. And in connecting this, I would use curved lines to put them together, thereby creating each pieces that we'll be using for the flare. Please try as much as possible to create um, a very nice curve so it will come out nice when you cut them out. I'll label my first piece number one. And for the second piece, I'll label that number two. To create the last piece for the center front, just go in by about 11 inches, make that point there, and then make a curve from that point through to the center line and down to the back line. So these are my cutout pieces and I cut them in twos. One for the left and one for the right. And I also went ahead to include my seam allowance for joining at the top area and also at the down area and I did same at the front but I did not include any seam allowance at the zipper area because I already had my zipper allowance there before slashing and spreading out these pieces so there was no need of including any other one there please go ahead and notch the center line because it will guide you when fixing all the pieces together. Now we have come to the end of drafting out this very beautiful dress pattern. Please join me on the sewing video to see how I brought this dress to life. If you find this video interesting, please give the video a thumbs up, leave your comments below, and do not forget to subscribe to this channel Click on the notification bell so it will notify you whenever I post a new video. And please share to your friends so they can learn as well. Moving forward, we are going to put together all these cutout pieces and stitch them according to how they are being labelled. 
with right sides facing each other. Please make sure to indicate your center line with a notch and start your stitching from that point to each end just as you place the both of them together so from the center point to the front and then to the back to avoid one side having any excess so i'm going to take this to the sewing machine and stitch them together then i'll come back and show you guys now this is how it looks like after stitching all the pieces together forming one whole flare and i also went ahead to cut out my lining so you can see how beautiful it looks already this is my fashion fabric and this is my lining i've also gone ahead to cut out the pieces for the center part of this dress so this is the fashion fabric for the center part and then my lining so this is the back part of the dress this is the back bodice the main fabric of of the dress and this is the lining for it so I'll, I'll just go ahead and iron that and trim off any excess if there happens to be any i'll do the same with the lining for the center front so i'll keep all these aside and cut my bust cup I have shaped out one of the bust cup and I'll do the same for the other, measuring 10.5 in length and 6.5 in width. So the next thing you're going to do is take this piece and fold again together and then cut like you're going to cut out a flare. So I'm just going to trim off this edge to have a very nice shape. Mind you, my bust cup was first placed on fold before folding the second time. Now that I've done that, the next thing to do is hold out that for this bust cup. Before doing that, we're going to mark the center point of this piece or you can as well just notch the center point just to give you that guide in sewing. So I've notched the center for this piece and I'll do the same for the other piece. So the next thing now, we're going to hold about 1.5 inches that's down to the bottom. I'll take this to my sewing machine and come back to show you. So I've gone ahead to stitch my cup to the center piece. And inside of this, I went ahead to iron light interface on the bust cup and I did the same for the black fabric. I used it for the black fabric because I wanted some stability on it since it stretches. And my bust cup is a non-stretchy fabric. So as you can see, I have stitched my bust dart and also made a dart on my already made cup to have a very nice fit. So I went ahead to trim off the excess and aligned both darts together and stitched the both of them together before stitching the bust cup on my center piece. So this is how it looks like on the front after stitching. So the next thing I'll do now is to make use of my hemming gum. If you look at this particular cup very well, you see it sitting firmly and looking glued to the cup that I created. So I'm going to do the same for the other cup by cutting out a piece of my hemming gum and sticking it in between the already made cup and the cup that I created. So just go ahead and do the same thing for yours. Now you're going to make use of your pressing iron to glue these two cups together using your tailor's ham. So just place a piece of cloth on top and then press together to avoid burning your already made cup. Turn to the right side and then iron also. For my lining, I did the same with ironing interface on both the bust cup and the center piece. To have same effect as the main fabric so I'll take my lining now placing right side of the lining with the right side of the main fabric after sewing on the neckline I'll then flip it over so now I'm just going to take this to my sewing machine to stitch on and then I'll come back and show you guys how it looks like So I've sewn on my neckline, this is how it looks like inside of it and 
this is how the right side looks like and i've also gone ahead to turn my side seam and on the hemline i ironed strong interface on it on both the lining and of the main fabric i did this to give this part a little bit of structure so i flipped this over placing right side facing each other and stitch with half of an inch then flip it over then for my back bodies i've turned the neckline and also the zipper area including the side seam so i'll take these two pieces together right side facing each other and then stitch on my zipper allowance for this dress i'm going to be making use of an out seam sewing allowance not an in seam allowance so i'll take all these pieces to my sewing machine sew together and then i'll come back and show you guys okay guys i've gone ahead to stitch on the flare which is the goddess and this is how it looks inside the dress so i'm going to be using my lining to cover up the rough edges inside so this is how beautiful it looks right now my lining is going to be used to turn over to cover up those parts and for the back this is how the back looks and i have held on my zipper allowance leaving the lower part open for now so we are halfway done with this dress and you can see the basque effect at the back you can see the v-shape there and the front is having a very nice look so please guys make sure to press open your seam allowance so it will have a very neat look so when you press it open it's going to look really neat and beautiful so make sure you do that so the next thing we are going to do now is to introduce our lining to turn the lower part of the dress but before we do that we are going to be making use of this hard net to give the waist area some volume to enhance the hip measuring 1 to 1.5 inches from this first piece through to the back and leaving 1 to 1.5 inches before your zipper So I'll take my hard net now, flip it in two, measuring my waist area from that 1 to 1.5 inches all through to the zipper area. Multiply that measurement by 2 or by 3 depending on how much enhancement you want to put there and cut the hard net in curve. I'll take this to my sewing machine now, come back and show you guys. So guys, we are done with the sewing of this dress and see how so beautiful it's looking already. It's looking really nice and neat and please make sure yours is same way or even better. So I've gone ahead to fix up my sleeves. This is just a regular puff sleeve and I cut it in a triangular shape because I do not want any gathers on the shoulder area. In case you don't know how to cut this puff sleeve, please just leave your comments below and I'll make a video on that. So I'm going to be making use of my store-bought appliques. This is the one for the bust area. I'm going to be stitching with my hand needle and thread round the bust and also on the other bust. And I'll do the same round this shoulder through to the neckline and then stop before my zipper. So I'll bring on my needle and thread and then I'll come and show you guys how I did this. But before then, we'll make use of this other applique. It's really nice and shiny. This particular one is not a must, so you can decide to make use of any other one. So I'll just take it, trim a piece out of it. It could be time taken, but it's all worth it. So just trim off a piece and I'll use my UHU gum to stick it to my dress so you just put it in between your black fabric and your Ankara or whichever color of, of fabric you'll be making use of so you just put it and then place it properly arrange it on it and use your gum to stick it together so I'll do the same thing for the sides of the dress from the front to the back or whichever way you want to take it from. 
now guys it's time for the hand needle and thread sewing so i'll carefully tag this woven applique on my bust and i'll do the same on the other bust so i'll tack this making sure it's only tacked on my main fabric and not coming out through on my lining so you see how i'm separating the both of them to be sure it's not tacking on my lining so to give that part some ease and then i'll cut this off and sew the other part so this is how it looks like the finished work after sewing on the woven applique so i'm going to make use of my gum to stick this cut out applique on the seam lines of the dress so i'll apply the gum directly on the cut out piece not on the dress because i do not want to make any mess so i'll just apply it carefully on the piece and then stick it on the lines of the dress so here i decided to make use of single piece stones and i'm just arranging them in order to make it more beautiful so i'm going to make use of my pressing iron to stick it to the dress but before that i'll place on a light towel and then press on high heat so i am pressing it this way to avoid burning my dress not after all that work so removing my iron this is how it looks like and i'll fill up that space so this is how it looks like after finishing the dress this is the final look of the dress it's looking really beautiful and this is how the inside of it looks like really neat without any rough part you're seeing so from the back through to the front this is how it looks everything is covered so this is how it looks like on me see how nice and beautiful it looks please if you enjoyed this tutorial as much as i enjoyed making this video please do not forget to subscribe like and leave your comments below and click on the notification bell so it will notify you whenever i post a new video if you want to see more interesting videos like this please do not forget to subscribe and share these videos to your friends so they can also learn how to make this dress So guys, if you want to learn how to make your own already made cup looking all nice and beautiful like this, just leave your comments below. This is how the already made cup looks on this finished outfit. It's looking really nice. So if you want to learn, please drop your comments. So today we're going to be learning how to make your own already made cup with the use of store-bought foam. So you can get this foam in any furniture making shop. This foam is really soft to the touch and also very flat. So we're just going to be needing a little piece of this to make our cup. Meanwhile, we're also going to be making use of a little piece of SD in covering the foam. And of course, our bust cup cutout pattern, which is really important for this tutorial, not forgetting our scissors also. Please, in case you don't know how to achieve these cutout top patterns, just drop your comments and as much as I see the comments, I'll drop an interesting video on that. So as you can see, I have included half of an inch seam allowance all round, which will be very useful for us when we have cut out our foam. Moving forward, I'll take these cup patterns, place them on the foam and then cut exactly to shape. So I'll take the first piece and then cut this out. Don't forget we'll be needing these foams in twos, one for the left and one for the right. So that is exactly what I'm doing here. Now that we have our foam cut out pieces, make sure to label them as indicated on the pattern paper to avoid placing them wrongly so this is my center front and my side front now we have them in twos one for the left and one for the right 
so if you look at this foam very well you see that it's really flat and it's measuring about half of an inch so placing my tape you can see it's measuring about half of an inch but still we're going to be making the edges even more flatter so we're going to be trimming off on these edges to make it even more flatter and this is how to do it so just carefully trim off on these edges all round so now we have our first two trimmed out pieces taking a very close look at this you see it's much more flatter than it earlier was so just looking at it all round you see how so flat it is all round so the next thing we're going to be doing right now is making use of our air stay in covering this foam so i'll take this to my pressing table and place this carefully on my trimmed out foam and with the use of my pressing iron on low heat i'll gum this air stay to this foam so i'll take this over to work on and come back to show you guys now this is how it looks like after putting on the air stay so I'll just trim off the excess because we won't be needing all that. So this is how it looks like after trimming off the excess. The next thing we're going to be doing here is aligning these two pieces on the bust point. Not forgetting one is the center front and the other the side front. So this trimmed out part is where we're going to be placing facing each other. So make sure to place it facing each other like so align properly and then hold a dart of half of an inch just like you would do on your main fabric so i'll take this to my sewing machine to stitch on and then i'll come back and show you guys how it looks like so guys we have our already made cup formed out you can see how so beautiful it is looking already so taking a very close look at this, you can see how so cupped out it is. You can see the depth in there and I also went ahead to press open my seam line with the use of my tailor's ham both on the inside and on the outside, placing on it a light towel before pressing. I also went ahead to create about 3 to 4 stitch lines round the edges to make these edges even more flatter than it was trimmed and now it is looking really flat. Moving forward, we are going to be introducing our main fabric which I already ironed ST on, taking note of the bust point. I went ahead to press open my seam line both on the outside and on the inside. So I would place this on my bust cup, making sure that the darts align with each other both on the top and on the lower part. I would secure these parts holding it together with my pins. So go ahead and do the same thing for yours. Please make sure to arrange this properly before holding with pins. So I'll hold the top part first. And then the lower part I'll align properly and then secure with my pin. So from side to side, stretch out your fabric and secure with pins, leaving no space in between. So this is the lining for this cup and I'm fitting it in, making sure that the darts align and that it fits in properly to avoid any finished problems. Now that we have checked the fitting, I'll keep that aside. As you can see, the lining and the main fabric are sewn same way. Now our cup is ready to be fixed on the lower part of our corset top. So please go ahead to stitch together the center and side piece and then fix on your cup. So this is how it will look like after you have stitched together. And trust me, it will look even more beautiful after your cup has been fixed. So please, if you find this video very helpful, please do not forget to like and leave your comments below. And also do not forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. So now you can just go on and attach whatever you want on the yoke or you can leave it like so. 
I want to say thank you to my subscribers. Thank you for sticking here with Balmage Fits. And please, if you have any question, just drop it on the comment section and I'll attend to them. And I hope to drop even more interesting videos moving forward so you can drop your suggestions on the comment section. So from here, I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye.